Thank you so much. And I was happy to hear the chairman mention our labs. Um, certainly, if we are going to continue to attract the best and brightest, we need cutting edge research facilities. Um, but I'd like to talk a little bit about the increased rate and severity of natural disasters. Due to the changing climate, they're impacting our installations, our readiness every year, impacting our national security as a whole. So I understand that in the FY24, um, in installation resilience and energy accounts, they were targeted, as we heard from our ranking, as, quote, wasteful climate change programs. And yet, as we've heard in many hearings over the years, including on this committee, these programs are critical for building both energy and extreme weather resilience and mission assurance at our domestic installations and developing oper operational energy programs that increase on-station time and mitigate contested logistics challenges with near-peer competitors. So first, Secretary Chaudhary, then Secretary Jacobson, could you talk about how these cuts could impact readiness? Thank you, Rep. Cheryl. I uh, appreciate it. And um, uh, <clears throat> I would say, and I would bring it to uh, your home state of New Jersey, where we are installing and investing in a microgrid uh, using an en energy service performance contract. Uh, at that location, uh, the power demands at a joint base, uh, as they have become a joint base, uh, I've experienced it myself uh, because I was stationed there many, many years ago and flew C-17s out of that location. Uh, but the partnerships required also required uh, um, a tremendous amount of understanding of the, uh, uh, the layered power structures within that installation. And installing a microgrid will allow you to do a number of things. One, uh, it allows you to add energy storage capability. Should the lights go out due to grid stress, it allows you to um, have key redundancies that allow you to keep power moving. Uh, second, it allows you to island from the local community if a civil unrest is being uh, disrupted by unfriendly adversaries, uh, then you can island from that location and then get the jets out of town. As you know, uh, C-17s are key to mobility and uh, activating our response in any threat, anytime, anywhere. So getting those jets out of town is critical. By having a microgrid, you can get those jets out of town because you can island from uh, other disruptions, store your power, and then um, and get the jets out of town and then resume operations. The other, and, and then once you have that installed, you can train to that standard. You can conduct energy resilience readiness exercises that allow you to uh, find gaps, understand where critical redundancies need work, and evaluate yourself. And that all incurs in conjunction with resiliency programs, not to mention operational energy programs when if you uh, add uh, small 3D printed micro veins to the side of a C-17, you could save millions and millions of gallons of fuel, and that builds agility for the fight. So all these things in both portfolios add up to uh, uh, the criticality of uh, building resiliency and how those climate funds uh, can benefit our readiness going forward. Thank you so much. Certainly in a state like New Jersey, which has withstood Superstorm Sandy, and we see attacks on our pipelines from foreign adversaries, so you can imagine an attack on our grid, having those microgrids and the resiliency they provide, as well as, as you were suggesting, um, being able to, to meet some of the logistics challenges um, with some of these technologies is something I hear requested from many of our services. Uh, Ms. Jacobson. Uh, thank you very much for that question. And just to address also your interest in labs, and I know we talked about this last time, I just want to report that in our five-year program, we do have a, a substantial investment for Picatinny Arsenal, so I'm glad to report that. Our investment, uh, uh, which some have tagged as climate change investments and therefore were reduced from the FY24 budget or eliminated, I should say, they're about readiness. It's about resilience. Congress has directed us in previous legislation to maintain ready and resilient installations. And that's what this is about. The vulnerabilities uh, to our power are not just from severe weather. Sometimes they're from man-made vulnerabilities. There was a shooting at a substation at Fort Liberty that caused a loss of power to 45,000 people for several days. We can't afford to lose power. If we lose power, we lose training. With respect to severe weather, if, if our, our bases are inundated by flooding, for example, 
as was West Point last summer in a very severe storm where West Point was the epicenter. West Point lost power. There's at this point 200, over $200 million of damage and counting. So this is about keeping our bases resilient and ready to train. Operationally, again, this is everything we're doing operationally for hybridization and future, potentially future electrification of the of our tactical vehicles. Not now. It's it's operation. It's uh, it's meant to be. Uh, uh, right now, it's research. It's it's meant to improve combat efficiency. It's meant to save fuel. It's meant to. Uh, uh, make sure that our, our vehicles of the future are, are silent, are faster, don't have a heat marker, and make the warfighter more ready. We would never, ever compromise yes. effectiveness of our mission, ever.